All right, good morning. I'm Judge Amy Carter. This is courtroom one, session one. Could I have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, please? Good morning, Lakeisha Halen, Office of the Public Defender. Elaine Fusco, State Attorney's Office. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Are you Mr. Mitchell? Yes, ma'am. Sir, this is 20 CF 949. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for grand theft third degree of a motor vehicle, grand theft third degree in dealing in stolen property. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is 2,500. Bond on count two is going to be 500. Bond on count three is 150. Um, you are not to have any contact with Saul Sebastiano, and you are not to return to the Tradewinds condominium complex. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Your name? Jesus Marquez. Mr. Marquez, you're here for an out of county warrant out of Osceola County, sir, related to a petty theft. Your bond is set at none. You will see a judge when you get to first appearance in Osceola County, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Sir, your name? Hagenio Atwell. Mr. Atwell, this is case number. 20 CF 1010, you were arrested for fleeing and eluding. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond, sir, is going to be $4,000. I'm revoking the bonds on your out on bond cases. Those will be set at none. Miss, I have a job from this baby. I please sir, give you, me a bond. I, I'm sorry. Your bonds are revoked based on the facts that you were out on bond on two driving related cases, and this is a driving case. Thank you. Sir, good morning. good morning. Tell me your name, please. Travis Bishop. Mr. Bishop, this is 20 CF 884. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for burglary of a dwelling, grand theft from the curtilage, dealing in stolen property, and receiving money from a pawnbroker by false verification. Those were all pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to have any contact with Patricia Banker. You are not to return to Kenny Beck Court. You are not to um, frequent any pawn shops. Your bond on count one is 5,000. Your bond on count two, 150, 3,150, 4,150. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Robert Ward refused to attend your honor. Mr. Boyd did. All right. Well, I'm going to find a waiver of Mr. Boyd's appearance based upon his refusal to come to court. He was arrested in 20 CF 993 for burglary of a dwelling and grand theft greater than $100 from the dwelling. There's probable cause for those offenses. He's not to return to 351 Floral Drive or have any contact with the victim. Bond on count one. is 5,000, bond on count two is 150. He was also arrested in 20 CF 991 for fraudulent use of credit cards. Um, there is probable cause for those offenses. Bond on count one is $1,000, bond on count two is 150, and the public defender is appointed for both cases. Excuse me? Oh, yes, that's right. So, I just intend it to be 1,150 total. Now, well, what if we do, that's fine, it can be 150 for all four. That's all right, okay. You know, is that fine for you, Anne? Does it work on your paperwork? Okay, all right. Good morning, your name? Anthony Brooks. Mr. Brooks, you are here in 20 CF 1040. You were arrested for uh, home invasion robbery with a firearm, aggravated assault with a firearm, and grand theft third degree. There is probable cause for these offenses, sir. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, Ms. Fusco, did you want to be heard with respect to bond? 
Um, i just like to ask the court to rely on the information in the arrest affidavit to find there is proof evident or presumption great and hold the defendant without bond. All right. Ms. Haling. Yeah, no, we defer to the court in this matter. Okay. So based upon the information that is contained in the sworn uh, probable cause arrest affidavit, there is um, sufficient uh, evidence to, to support that there's proof evident or presumption great, sir. At this time, your bond is going to be set at none as to count one. Bond on count two is 5,000. Bond on count three is 5,000. You are not to return to the Motel 6. You're not to have any contact with any of the witnesses or victims in this matter. You're not to have any uh, contact with your co-defendant. You're not to possess any weapons or any firearms, sir. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Your name? George Bernie Clayton. Mr. Clayton, you're here in 20 CF 1017. You were arrested for petty theft, second degree, third or subsequent offense. There's probable cause. Your bond is $1,000, sir, and you're not allowed to return to the Publix. Thank yes, you. Set Mr. Corbett for tomorrow. Yeah. Done. Okay. Are you Christopher Esland? Yes. Mr. Esland, you are here in 20 CF 1018. You were arrested for possession of a firearm on school property and resisting officer without violence. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is 10,000. Your bond on count two is 500. I'm also gonna place you on pretrial release and you're gonna have random urinalysis, sir. You're not to possess any weapons or any firearms. If you do have any weapons, you need to surrender those to the police department within six hours of your release. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? Ben Hampton, Jr., ma'am. Mr. Hampton, this is 20 CF 1042. You were arrested for possession of cocaine with intent, intent to sell or deliver, possession of heroin with intent to sell or deliver, and possession of methamphetamine with intent. There is probable cause for all of the offenses. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is 5,000. Your bond on count two is 150. Your bond on count three is 150. However, at this time, I'm revoking the bond in 19 CF 15087. That will be set at none, sir. Thank you. Good, or good morning. Your name, sir? Craig Hugley. Mr. Hugley, this is 20 CF 941. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for criminal mischief. Um, the state has actually filed a one count information charging you with criminal mischief with damage of $1,000 or more. Um, at this time, sir, your bond is $500 and I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Ishman? Yes, ma'am. Sir, you are here in 19 CF 16071. You are here because you have violated your terms of your pretrial release. Your bond at this time is set at none. You'll have to have your lawyer file a motion in Judge Marquez's division. Okay? Thank you. I, I recall. How are you doing this morning, ma'am? Good morning, sir. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine. <clears throat> are you Mr. Levy? Yes, ma'am, I am. All right, sir. You are here in 20 CF 1044. You were arrested for possession of uh, tetrahydrocannabis, possession of cocaine, another count of possession of tetrahydrocannabis, 
Uh, conspiracy to sell or deliver a controlled substance, possession of cannabis less than 20 grams, and resisting officer without violence. Sir, there is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Bond on count one is 1,000. Bond on count two is 150, 3,150. Four one fifty, five one hundred, six one hundred. You're not to have any contact with Hygienio Atwell. Yes, ma'am. You're not to possess <clears throat> any controlled substances without a valid prescription, sir. You also have uh, 19 CT six nine seven three. You failed to appear related to a uh, no valid driver's license case. Yes, ma'am. And there was a uh, really like a real mishap in that in that case. Because okay. I was never notified of a court date, and I so happened to miss my court date. And after I missed my court date, I guess they sent me another bond. The judge that 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 uh did right. the the capius. The bond right now bond. is set um, at two thousand um, dollars. How many days does Mr. Levy have on the no ballot? Ms. Husko, did you want to make an offer on the no valid case? Um, not today, Your Honor. All right. Does Mr. Levy want to resolve that case? Yeah, no, he's not going to resolve his case. Okay, that's fine. Your bond on that, sir, is 2000 Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma Y'all have a nice day. Thank you. You too, sir. Sir, good morning. Your name? Julio Angel Lopez. Mr. Lopez, sir, you are here in 20 CF 1025. You were arrested for possession of fentanyl, possession of drug paraphernalia, and resisting officer without violence. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Mr. Lopez, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance at this time. You need to contact your lawyer within 24 hours of your release from the jail so that they have good contact information for you so that you stay up to date on your case, sir, okay? You'll have to attend all your court dates as well. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mellinson is mental health director. All right, we'll reset Mr. Mellinson. Good morning, your name? Luis Mendez. Mr. Mendez, this is 20 CF 876. You were arrested for home invasion robbery with a deadly weapon and mask and grand theft third degree of a motor vehicle pursuant to a probable cause warrant. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. Ms. Busco, did you want to be heard with respect to bond? Um, just like to ask the court to rely on the information in the arrest affidavit to find that there's proof of a presumption great and hold the defendant without bond. Ms. Haley, did you want to be heard? Um, yeah, no, we defer to the court in this matter. Okay. So the um, affidavit for arrest, the sworn affidavit for arrest, does um, support that there is proof evident or presumption great. Uh, Mr. Mendez, at this time, bond on count one will remain at none. Bond on count two is 2,500. You are not to have any contact with Daniel Lazama or any of the witnesses in this matter. You are not to return to 2913 Sheringham Drive, and you're not to possess any weapons or any firearms, sir. Thank you.
Good morning. Are you Mr. Miller? Yes, ma'am. Sir, you are here in case number 20 CF10, <clears throat> excuse me, 22. You were arrested for grand theft, third degree of a motor vehicle, and resisting officer without violence. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is $1,000. Your bond on count two is $100. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Bigney. Your Honor, good morning. We are here in case number 20 CF 1043. Julian Jeremillo. Yes. David Bigney on behalf of Mr. Jeremillo. Mr. Jeremillo was arrested for trafficking in cocaine greater than 400 grams with a firearm, possession of cannabis with intent to sell or deliver with a weapon, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and possession of ammunition by a convicted felon. Um, I do find that there is probable cause. Did I you mean, want to be heard? I did want to be heard. Sure, go ahead. Your Honor. Uh, at least uh, with reference to probable cause, uh, and, and specifically as it relates to the trafficking charge, the drugs that are referenced in the trafficking charge are in a safe. Um, at the beginning of the report, they indicate that Mr. Jaramillo had just gotten home. Uh, they don't say anything about how, or just gotten to that home. They don't say when he got there. There's nothing identifying of him found within the safe. Uh, there is another adult in the house. There's no indication that ha that house belongs to him or that he lives in that house. Um, I did take a quick glance, so if you see something that I, that I overlooked, um, but uh, the, uh, I don't see anything attributing him to that uh, other than uh, an indication that he does know a, or, or he does know where a combination to the safe was. No indication when the last time he was in there, had he ever been in there, whether or not anything in that safe belonged to him or whether or not he had any knowledge. Uh, there's not anything at all to suggest any of that. So from a, from a probable cause perspective, uh, I, I would uh, argue that if there is probable cause, it would be by a, by a hair. Uh, but I don't believe that there is. There's just nothing to tie him to it other than the fact that he was in the residence uh, for maybe a couple of minutes prior to, to them getting there. Uh, that being said, uh, if there is probable cause, I want to remind the court that he was here yesterday and these charges stemmed at the same time as why we were here yesterday. This was a deliberate act on law enforcement to hold off a day as he was about to bond out on the charges from yesterday. So he's already got an extra day in based on that. You have a $5,000 bond on one of the counts yesterday, 150 on the remaining counts. Today we have 150 on the remaining counts with the exception of the trafficking which is no bond, we would ask that if you do find probable cause, and again, we don't believe that there is, that, uh, that your bond be consistent with the remaining counts. He's already got the 5,000 and that this be a $150 bond. He already has the no firearm and no, uh, um, no controlled substances without prescription conditions on there and the no contact. Uh, and we're certainly not opposed to those being added on to this. Ms. Busco, did you want to be heard? Uh, the trafficking in cocaine greater than 400 with a firearm is a PBL. Un understood. And we're, again, I'm right. saying that there's just nothing to tie him to it other than the fact that, that, that it's he... It's in his house? Well, they don't say it's his house, first of all. They don't say they've ever seen him in, 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 in the... Uh, uh, it, they say, according to them, he had just arrived there. They, they, they mention a video that shows him pulling up to that house literally minutes earlier. And there is another adult in the house. There's no telling who else had been in the house. And again, there's nothing to say he's ever been uh, in that house prior to that, that moment. Uh, and there's certainly nothing to say that he's ever, ever been in that safe. Do you want to respond to Mr. Bigney's probable cause argument? Um, just, Your Honor, we would like to, uh, the court to consider all the facts in the arrest affidavit, including the fact that the resident searched what is the listed address for the defendant on the arrest affidavit, and uh, the items were uh, in a safe in the residence, which, uh, you know, wouldn't... Uh, 
be accessible to um, you know other people. Uh, we'd like to, the court to consider all the facts in the affidavit to determine there is probable cause and uh, uh, in the alternative ask for 24 hours for a supplement. We'd also like the uh, court to rely on the information in the arrest affidavit to find that there's proof evident or presumption great and hold the defendant without bond. Yeah, the, the, the affidavit says deputi deputies identified Mr. Jaramillo and responded to his residence at 517 Artesian Street and then they, his car was parked there and his car was, that car was registered to him there. I, I would ask that the court take a look at the affidavit from yesterday and I believe that the address that they said that is his address is different than what is on this particular report. Um, for starters, and then as it relates to proof evident presumption great, at best this is a joint constructive possession case. I don't think that would rise to proof evident presumption great, so we would ask again for a bond. Okay, I, don't, I think there's probable cause for each of the offenses that he was arrested for. Um, I agree with you that there is not proof evident or presumption great. <clears throat> um, I'm not gonna treat count one as a subsidiary offense. Um, from the counts yesterday. So that's going to be, uh, bond's going to be $50,000 on count one. Count two will be 150. Count three will be 150. Count four will be 150. Um, sir, you're not to possess any uh, weapons or firearms as we stated yesterday. And anything that you do have, you need to surrender to the sheriff's department within six hours of your release. You're also not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. Yes, ma'am. Right. Anything else? That's it. Thank All you. Right. You're welcome. Good morning, your name? Oh, Chris Philippe. Mr. Philippe, sir, you are here in 20 CF 1001. You were arrested for burglar of a dwelling, possession of burglary tools, and criminal mischief. There is uh, probable cause. I'll appoint the public. Actually, sir, Mr. Philippe, you didn't fill out the form for the public defender. Were you going to hire a lawyer to help you, or do you want me to appoint the public defender to help you? No, I would like to be myself. All right, you'll be able to talk to the division judge more about that. Uh, can, I, can I ask you a question? You want to ask me a question? Yes. Sure. Um, um, I didn't burglarize nothing. Well, hold on, Mr. Fleet. I don't want to talk to you I about your case. I just want to get case. it on for the record. You, all right, I understand. But I don't want to talk more about the facts I, of your can case. I, can okay. I just state something for the record? What? I just want to state something for the record. If it's about the facts of your case, I'm going to tell you not to say anything. It's not about the facts of the case. I just want to state something for the record. Okay, sir. So, you know, uh, uh, so it won't be said that I never said anything. You feel me? Um, the house is abandoned. Sir, broken. I'm aware of the facts, but you're talking about the facts of your case, so I'm not going to let you talk anymore. Why, why do you guys Mr. Philippe, your bond on count one is $1,000. I'm taking into consideration the facts in your affidavit while setting your bond. I understand what your oh, arguments are. Oh, you're going to drop be. the bond for me a little bit? I did. Thank God. Gracias. Miss, thank you. Mr. Philippe, can you just relax for me, please? Yes, yes, okay. Your bond on count one is 1000 Your bond on count two is 150 Your bond on count three is 100 you. You're welcome, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me your name. Andrea Preston. Mr. Preston, you're here in 20 CF 1021. You were arrested for grand theft, third degree of a motor vehicle, and resisting officer without violence. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you, sir. Your bond on count one is 1,000. Your bond on count two is 100. All right. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Your name? Mr. Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes. Sir, you were here in 20 CF 988. You were arrested for burglary of a dwelling and for criminal mischief. There is probable cause. 
I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I want to release you on your own recognizance, but you don't come to court. I come. I'm sorry. You what? I wish you would. The last time you failed to show up was last year in January. It's been a whole year. I've let my lessons in. How are you going to get to court? Ma'am? How are you going to get to court? I have a friend. Uh, I wish you I'm here. Where are you going to stay? Um, 5367 Lewis Way in Orlando. You're going to be here in Orlando? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How are you going to keep up on your court? Um, I have a friend. Case. They have phone number. They have contacts. You have a contact number you can provide to the yes, public defender? Yes, ma'am. Can you do that for me now? Please. Yes, okay. Write that down for her. Mr. Rhodes, I'm sure you're aware that if you fail to appear for court, that there's going to be a warrant issued for your arrest and it's not going to have a bond. All right. Mr. Rhodes, I, you can't go back to that house, okay? Even if it's vacant and boarded up and it's cold, you cannot okay. go back to the house. Do you understand? I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you. Yes, Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Adina Rivera. Ms. Rivera, this is 20 CF 1019. You were arrested for possession of cocaine and possession of drug paraphernalia. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you, ma'am. Uh, at this time, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. You need to contact your lawyer within 24 hours of your release with good contact information and um, attend all your court dates. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. You're also not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Suchaki? Mm -hmm. Are you still tenure? Okay. All right. Ms. Suchaki was arrested in 20 CF 1000 for grand theft from a dwelling or curtilage and burglary of a dwelling. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent her. Um, I'm finding a waiver of her appearance based upon her refusal to come to court. Bond on count one is 150. Bond on count two is 5,000. Ma'am, good. Morning. Tell me your name, please. Jennifer Warden. Ms. Ward, you're here at 19 CF 14088. You were arrested pursuant to a probable cause warrant for fleeing and eluding and driving while license suspended with two prior convictions. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond on count one is 5000 and uh, your bond on count two is going to be $150. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Your Honor, the um, driving while license wasn't... Um, I didn't get that affidavit. Um, was that the RLR? Or oh, was she not booked on it? Oh, you're right. There's no P. They found no PC, so that charge shouldn't be there. So the bond is just the five thousand. Okay. Thank you, Miss Hamilton. So do I still? I have two charges, correct? You do well. Oh, it has been filed. I see. 
Okay. So you do have two charges. That there's just a bond on one of them. Because okay. when the warrant was signed, there wasn't probable cause for what they were asking the judge to um, sign. Could you tell me anything about a court date for this? Because uh, this isn't something that I did. Like, I know every no, I criminal will say that, but yeah. I really no, didn't. No, I don't. I don't have a court date because it's a felony case. So okay. you'll get a, um, you'll have to, like, keep abreast of your case through the clerk system, and they'll also send you notice in the mail. Okay. Your bondsman so, will provide you notice as well. Okay. From the jail? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome, you. ma'am. Sir, good morning. Your name? How are you doing? I'm, I'm good, Jimmy sir. Wright. Mr. Wright, you are here in 20 CF 1014. You were arrested for possession of a firearm by convicted felon, ag assault with a firearm, carrying a concealed firearm, and resisting officer without violence. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Excuse me, you're not to have any contact with Karen Robinson. You're not to possess any weapons or any firearms. Your bond on count one is 4,000. Your bond on count two is 2,500. Your bond on count three is 150. Your bond on count four is 100. And then I'm revoking the bonds in all of the out on bond cases. Those will be set at none, sir. Thank you. You, you say you was revoking them? I am. So that mean I can't bond out? That's right. You have to have your lawyer file a bond motion. Okay, um, what the, um, assault on the, um, Good morning, ma'am. Sir, your name? Uh, Jermaine Baker. Mr. Baker, this is an out-of-county warrant from Bay County, Florida. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Excuse me. Related to a sexual battery on a victim 12 years of age or younger. Your bond, sir, is set at none. Bay County is going to come and pick you up, and you're going to see a judge when you get there. Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, sir? David Cruz. Mr. Cruz, you're here for an out-of-county warrant from Brevard County related to possession of a firearm by a delinquent or ammunition. Your bond is set at none, sir. Brevard County is going to come pick you up, and you'll see a judge when you get to first appearance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to pass Mr. Johnson, because Mr. Self is going to be appearing for Mr. Johnson. We're going to pass Mr. Johnson. Are you Mr. Johnson? Yes. Okay. You're, I'm waiting on your lawyer, so we're going to pass your case for now, and we'll recall it, okay? He's coming? He is. I think she wrote around 10, so he might have to be in second session. Um, and then... Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Your name? James J. Williams II, ma'am. All right. Ms. Williams, just give me one second. I'm going to address this case. Um, this is Valencia De Seer, um, 20 CF 846. Um, I guess they had added a fad to her case. I saw her. She was arrested for an ag bat and false imprisonment, but she also has a pending case in 19MM9557, which is a trespass in dwelling. It's set for court on the third. I'm not going to take any action on the trespass case with all the remaining con uh, previous conditions to remain in place. All right. I apologize, sir. Tell me your name again. James J. Williams, ma'am. Mr. Williams. All right. So this is 20 MM 455. This is defense motion 
for release on own recognizance or in the alternative to continue the finding of a competence and place the defendant on pretrial release. So, Ms. Healing, I see this evaluation that was conducted on December 23rd of 2019, finding um, Mr. Williams incompetent to proceed. Yes, sir. Um, and then I do see the order signed by Judge um, Allen on January 9th of this year, finding him incompetent. However, I don't know based on the, upon the order if the state stipulated to that finding. What is it? It's mine. Oh, okay. Um, if there were two evaluations, I, I feel like I don't have enough information. Um, at this time to make a finding as it relates to his competency. Um, what's the well, he has been found incompetent Ms. Wisco did you want to be heard I, I do your honor um, the Alexander and Sledge cases um, do uh, both provide that there's supposed to be a formal hearing before each new trial and in this case there just wasn't you know adequate notice for the ASA assigned to the case to evaluate the evaluation provided to make a decision whether the state felt like they wanted to hire their own experts and so we just feel like this there needs to be a formal hearing the state needs notice the state needs to be evaluate whether they want to obtain their own experts and um, would ask that the court grant the motion to release uh, on his own recognizance and then uh, if they would like to address incompetence to schedule a formal hearing with adequate notice for the state to evaluate the evaluation and to decide if they want to get their own uh, experts and so forth. Okay, that's what I'm going to do, Ms. Hanley. I just don't have enough information about how he was found incompetent and uh, I just don't comfortable doing that making a finding of incompetence at this yes, time but I will release him on his own recognizance with with conditions yes and then once the case is filed on they can um, to figure that out in the in the trial division so mr. Williams yeah. sir I am going to release you today on your own recognizance and miss um, Hanley I'll need a different order because this the only order provided to me is the um, the 916 order and okay. I'm not going to sign that. Okay. Um, but it would just need to indicate that Mr. Um, Williams is released on his own recognizance. It would need to include um, that he's to maintain contact with his lawyer. He's to attend all court dates. Uh, he's not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription. Um, and that'll be all. Mr. Williams? Well, um, I, don't, I don't know who my lawyer is, ma'am. Well, Ms. Haling is going to give you, she's also a lawyer with the Public Defender's Office, so she's going to give you that information today so you'll have it. Yes, ma'am. All right, so you need to contact them within 24 hours of your release from the jail. Yes, ma'am. All right? Yes. He won't be leaving. Oh, Ms. Haling, was your office aware of that? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Um, so, 
again, I, it's not my case, obviously, but I don't know if, if he's not leaving the jail, if they he wants to be released ROR on this case. Um, yeah, and I'll just go ahead with the motion as his attorney filed it, and okay. um, maybe they know more about sure. the... Okay. All right. I guess they can always ask for him to be remanded if they want to either, or have be revoked. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Williams. And, Your Honor, can I get that order to you for sure. a second session? Okay. Just make sure you send it to the state first. Yes. Okay. that I knew about was the one that I took no action on the trespass. Do you want the face sheet? Oh, I didn't have it. Sure. Is he here now? Oh, again? Yes. Uh, he's here for grand theft, third degree of a motor vehicle, ag assault, and criminal mischief. I don't have the effort. I read it yesterday, I'm sure, but I don't remember. All right. Um, this is 20 CF 958, Peter Tassani. He was arrested for grand theft of a motor vehicle, aggravated assault, and criminal mischief. Oh, I remember this. Okay. There is probable cause. Ms. Haley, I'm going to waive his appearance. If that's all right with you and appoint your office, then you guys can go talk to him. Yes, you can. Is that all right? Okay, because he can't resolve it. Okay. Um, and then he's not to return to airport towing, and he's not to possess any weapons or any firearms, and I'm going to stay the bond as to each count. All right. Are we ready for a 33-day? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to start with the add-on, which is 19 CF 17319, Michael Felis. Yes, Your Honor. On January 22nd, there was a notice of non-filing. That'll be granted. 19 CF 17382, Eric Keenan. Yes, Your Honor. On January 23rd, there was a notice of non-filing. That will be granted. 19 MM 9481, Joshua Corum. Yes, Your Honor. On December 26th, there was a notice of non-filing. That will be granted. 19 CF 17418, Lewis. De Jesus. Yes, Your Honor. On January 23rd, there was a notice of non filing. That will be granted. 19 CF 1740 408, Tony Johnson. Yes, Your Honor. On January 23rd, there's a notice of non filing. That will be granted. 19 CF 17354, Cameron Wallace. Yes, Your Honor. On January 23rd, there was an information filed. Filing ID 1021433397. That will be denied. 19 CF 16708, Kashan Epps. Yes, Your Honor. On January 23rd, there was a notice of non filing. His bond was revoked pursuant to 903.0471 on 1-8 of this year, and it's only been 17 days since his revocation, so at this time that will be denied. CF 17343, David Stager. 
Yes, Your Honor. On January 23rd, an information was filed, filing ID 102-133-718. Good morning. I'm Judge Amy Carter. This is Courtroom 1, Session 2. Could I have the attorneys place their appearances on the record, please? Good morning. Lakeisha Halen, Office of the Public Defender. Elaine Fusco, State Attorney's Office. Thank you. You want Mr. Johnson first? Sure, that'd be fine. Right. This is case number, well, it's an out-of-county uh, on-view violation of probation out of Seminole County. Right. Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Self. Uh, Your Honor, Evan Self, on behalf of Jason Cecil Johnson, I understand it's an out-of-county warrant on violation of probation. Um, I, I'm assuming that there's no bond. I don't know if Judge Rex either wrote a bond amount on that. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's nothing that I can do about it here today in, in Orange County, but I did want to bring to the court's attention that Mr. Johnson has previously been declared incompetent in case 2016 CF 3708, which is the underlying offense in Seminole County. Um, and that was uh, March 25th of 2018. Uh, Dr. Mings found him to be um, it remained the opinion of the evaluator that Jason Cecil Johnson was not competent to proceed. He presents as a person who appears to have very uh, severely limited general intellectual abilities, well below the bottom 0.1% of the population based on my prior assessment results. It's my opinion within a reasonable degree of psychological uh, certainty that he is clearly permanently incompetent to proceed. I see no indication that he currently meets the criteria for involuntary hospitalization or treatment. I believe uh, that there is no reasonable expectation that he will become competent to proceed in the future. He is not likely to be able to benefit from any attempts at competency rep restoration training due to the severity of his intellectual deficits, though he is apparently uh, though he also apparently is treated for psychiatric illness, which he's still undergoing care and treatment and medication for, he appears stable in that regard, and the deficits rendering him incompetent to proceed are severe intellectual impairment. In addition to that, Judge Shea in two, uh, in, sorry, in four Orange County cases um, found uh, pursuant to an order in 2008 and 2008 CF 19220, 2005 CF 1344. 95 and 2009 MM 2334, 2009 MM 10227. That, based on the report, expert reports of Dr. Tressler, Dr. Danziger, and a prior report from Dr. Burns, all found the defendant uh, to be incompetent uh, to proceed uh, in, in those cases. And so, Mr. Johnson doesn't fully understand exactly what's going on. Uh, here today, he doesn't understand the role of the courts, he doesn't understand the role of lawyers. Uh, to me, it's a violation of his Sixth Amendment um, to, uh, to continue to incarcerate him, uh, but I understand that I'll have to raise those issues in Seminole County with Judge Rex. Sure, Rexita. I just want to make sure I understand. So after all of those orders were entered, there was no subsequent order adjudicating um, him competent to proceed. Correct. There has been no re, uh, finding that he is currently competent in any way in any of those cases. Yeah. Okay. Um. But I've explained to him as best I can that he's going to have to go to Seminole County to resolve this matter. He, yes. Okay. Yeah. And I see that he, I think he saw Judge Wish yesterday. Yes. For the underlying, and she gave him, or for the new law offense, and she gave Correct. him bonds on that. Correct. Um, and so yeah, you're you're right. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do in that situation we're in right now. He's also has the violent felony offender special concern on um, hold. Good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. Thank yep. you. Good morning, sir. Your name? Patrick Bernard. Mr. Bernard, you're here in 20 CF 1035. You were arrested for fleeing and eluding. There's probable cause. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. I am going to place you on pretrial release, sir, at this time. 
Thank you. And we've sat Mr. Butler. Um, do we know why he's downtown court? Child support. Miss um, Haley, do you want me to appoint your office and do his IA? Uh, yes, you are. Okay. That's 20 CF 1038. Um, Joshua Butler was arrested for possession of cocaine. There is probable cause. Um, I'll appoint a public defender to represent him. Uh, his bond is five hundred dollars. Good morning, sir. Your name? I'll tell you the boss. Mr. DeBose, this is 20 CF 1029. You are arrested for possession of MDMA, possession of cannabis less than 20 grams, and possession of drug paraphernalia. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Mr. DuBois, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance at this time. You need to contact your lawyer within 24 hours of your release from the jail, and you need to attend all court dates. You need to make sure you provide your lawyer with good contact information for you. That way you can stay on top of your case, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Good morning, your name? Angelo Goulon. Sir, you're here in 20 CF 1039. You were arrested for carrying a concealed firearm. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond is $2,500, sir. You're also not to possess any weapons or firearms. Thank you. So, when am I gonna be released? When you post your bond. If you don't have any other holds. Good morning, your name? Jabruni Yassin. Mr. Yassin, this is 20 CF 1030. You were arrested for possession of cocaine. There's probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Your bond is uh, $1,000, and you also have, it, have an immigration hold. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Your name? Good morning, Raul King. Mr. King, this is 20 CF 1028. You were arrested for trafficking in 10 grams of or more of MDMA with a weapon, possession of uh, MDMA, two counts, possession of cannabis less than 20 grams, and possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. I'm going to set your bond on count one at $25,000. Bond on count two is $150. Bond on count three, $150. Bond on count four, $100. Bond on count five, $150. And you're not to possess or consume any controlled substances without a valid prescription, and you're not to possess any weapons or any firearms, sir. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering, ask me for like ROR or like so I can get out of jail today. Uh, I was at Pranera. Mr. Are you Mr. Road? Yeah. Okay, okay Mr. Road, Mr. Road, I need you to yeah, stop for a second. Stop and listen. I didn't do any cocaine last night. That okay. wasn't mine. Mr. Road, yeah. I want you to stop talking and listen to me for a minute. Mr. Road, look at me. I need you to just... Take it down. I need to tell you a couple of things, and I don't want you to talk about the facts of your case. Do you understand? Okay. Okay. Um. So you are here in 20 CF 1031. You were arrested for loitering or prowling in possession of cocaine. 
there's probable cause for the offenses. Um, the Sir, you're interrupting me. I just asked you not to talk, please, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. You're not to return to the Panera Bread. Okay. You're not to possess any controlled substances without a valid prescription. I have work. Your bond on count one is 100. Your bond on count two is 500. Okay, could I get out of jail today? If you post your bond. Well, how long till, if I, if I don't post it, how long will it be? Probably a couple of months. A couple of months? Yes. I think the drugs weren't mine. Well, Mr. Road, I, that's not to be decided today. You're gonna have to talk to your lawyer about that and you'll have to have them file any motions that they think they need to file and prepare for your trial. Okay, so how long would it be? Uh, sir, I'm not quite sure. You'll have to talk to your lawyer. Come on. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Your name? Uh, Steven Steen. Mr. Steen, this is 18 CF 11068. Sir, it is alleged that you have violated your probation by using methamphetamine, by testing positive through a drug test. <clears throat> it also alleges that you have used amphetamine um, yes. And yes, you have no. failed to complete your 50 hours of community service, sir. At this time, your bond is set at none. I will appoint the public defender to represent you. You're going to see Judge Whitehead in the next seven to ten days. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, your name? Stanley Rodriguez. Ian Williams, Black, she's mental health care. All right, we'll reset that one. You're Mr. Rodriguez? Yeah. Sir, you are here in 19MM11. You failed to appear uh, for pretrial related to possession of cannabis less than 20 grams. Your bond is $500. Does he want to resolve it, Ms. Haling? Yeah, no. No? He won't resolve it. Okay. Good morning. Tell me your name, please. Randall Lee Sparks. Mr. Uh, Sparks, you were arrested in 20 CT 591 for DUI. The um, arrest affidavit says for 0 .20, and that's not reflected in the affidavit, but his ticket is correct, and it just says greater than 0.15. Yes. So I'm going to use the charging affidavit just to find, or the citation to find probable cause for um, DUI with a um, BAL greater than 0.15. Um, Mr. Sparks, your bond, sir, is $500. Yes. Okay, thank but, you. Uh, I, I, I don't know who to call to, to bail me out. I tried a bondsman, but he never showed up. Mr. Sparks, where do you live? Uh, Golden Rod. You live here locally? Yes. How long have you lived here? My whole life. All right. Um, you receive Social Security, is that right? Yes. Okay. And I got plenty of money in the bank. All right. Well, Mr. Sparks, I'm going to actually release you on your own recognizance. I am going to, however, order that you are not to possess or consume any alcohol or controlled substances, and I'm going to have you tested randomly through pretrial release, sir, okay? That'd be great. All right, sir. And you have to attend all your court dates and maintain contact with your lawyer. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Yeah. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Victoria Austin. Ms. Austin, this is uh, 20 MM 566. You were arrested for resisting officer without violence. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Ms. Austin, I'm gonna release you on your own recognizance at this time. I see that you are from New York. If the state of Florida pursues these charges against you, you will have to return to the state of Florida to take care of them. If you don't, a warrant will be issued for your arrest. It likely will have no bond. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I've appointed the public defender. They are going to, you need to contact their office within 24 hours of your release. Make sure they have all of your uh, good contact information. You're also gonna be given a court date when you leave the jail, unless you hear differently from your lawyer and you have, see that order that says you don't have to be here, you're going to have to come back to that court date. Do you understand? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Good morning, Destiny Bernie. Miss Bernie, this is 20 MM556. You were arrested for entering or remaining in a place for prostitution and prostitution. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender to represent you. Miss Fusco, is there an offer for Miss Bernie? There is, Your Honor. Um, it will be adjudication of guilt, seven days with credit time served, and then the statutorily required. Uh, I've provided an order for no return to the mapping zone, no return to the scene, an AIDS awareness course, and HIV uh, STD testing. Miss uh, Bernie, did you want to accept that offer? Yeah, and I may have just a moment. Sure. Your Honor, Ms. Bernie isn't going to accept the offer. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bernie. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance at this time. Um, you are not to return to the mapping zone or to the scene of this offense. Um, you are not to access back page. And you are to maintain contact with your lawyer and um, attend all court dates, ma'am. They're going to give you a court date when you're released from the jail. Okay. Um, and you need to be at that court date. All right, and your honor, will she also get um, the mapping zone um, information regarding the mapping zone? The, the, I, I provided some orders. I have the order, but it's um, it kind of gives out all the parameters. Miss <coughs> Fusco, would you um, print another one of those? Do, are you able to print another one of those orders? I have some more. Okay. Ms. Bernie, the document that the state's going to provide you tells you where you're not allowed to be. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Good morning. Sierra Colon. Ms. Colon, you are here in case number 20MM558. You were arrested for entering or remaining in a place for prostitution and prostitution. 
There's probable cause. I will appoint the public defender. Miss uh, Fusco, is it the same offer as before? Yes. So it would be seven days. Ma'am, with credit for, you have two days time served. You'd have to take the HIV AIDS awareness class and also have um, an STD HIV test and not return to the mapping zone. Did you want to accept that offer? Yeah, and I may have a moment. Sure. She qualifies for pretrial release as well. Yeah, and Ms. Colon doesn't want to accept the offer. All right, Ms. Colon, I'm going to place you on pretrial release at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Are you Ms. Dyke? Yes, Linda Dyke. Linda this is Elaine Dyke. Yes, ma'am. This is 20 MM 563. You were arrested for trespass on property after warning. Mm -hmm. There's probable cause. I'll appoint the public defender. Um, was there an offer for a mistake? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, three days with credit time served, court costs, no return to the scene of the trespass. Your Honor, Ms. Dyke is going to accept the offer. Plead no contest. All right. Okay. Ms. Dyke, did you read the plea form before court this morning? Yes, I sure did. Did you have any questions about any of the rights that you're giving uh, up? No, I don't. Are you on probation? Uh, no, I'm not. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Uh, yes. I have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? No, I haven't. All right, ma'am. I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to three days in the Orange County Jail. You have credit for two days time served. You're not to return to the Parkwood Plaza, I believe, yes. And you will have to pay court costs, which are due by January 24th of 2021. And you have 30 days to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court in writing. Oh, so I can't get out today? Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. That's all right, ma'am. Thank you. I know it's oh, confusing. Yeah. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Jacayla Purdy. Ms. Purdy, this is 20MM557. You were arrested for entering or remaining in a place for prostitution and prostitution. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Uh, was it the same offer as well, Ms. Fusco? Um, this one had a prior charge of prostitution, so the offer was going to be uh, the same except for uh, nine days. How many? Nine. So I just want to be clear, her, her history is only this out-of-state arrest for a false report of a crime and prostitution. She doesn't have a conviction, is that right? Um, that's correct, Your Honor. Okay, okay Your Honor, just, we can. I don't, I don't know if there was a dispossession. I can. I just want to make sure. because we, we can stay with the seven days. Okay, I just wanted to make sure for myself, too. So this face sheet, Megan, this is the one you're looking at? Yes, the oh. same exact one. I'm okay. just not sure. Some of them just don't have a disposition. So okay, yeah, we don't really know how it was resolved. Got it. May I have just a moment? Sure. How come it says multi-state offender, but then there's no information? She has a Georgia and New York um, history, Whatever. and neither of them have a disposition, so I'm not sure Got it. What, how the case was resolved. Okay. But they won't even tell us what, they all, what the arrests were? The, I have with the arrest. Oh, what the, the New York was a prostitution. Um, the Georgia was a false report of a crime. Oh, those are the uh, the arrest history. We just don't yes. know what they are. Yeah, I, I just see. don't know what the disposition was because it doesn't say whether okay. she was convicted or not. Yeah, and just to confirm, it's the seven day Miss Wisco. Okay.
Um, Your Honor, Ms. Purdy is going to accept the offer. Okay. Um, plead no contest. Sure. That's crazy, guys. I was just looking at that, too. I didn't. Ms. Purdy, did you read the plea form before you signed it, ma'am? Um, I was reading over it while I was sitting down. I kind of understand all of this already. Um, you do understand it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any questions about anything that's contained within the plea form about the rights you're giving up? Not really. All right. Are you on probation, ma'am? No. Do you understand if you are not a U.S. citizen that this plea will subject you to deportation? Yeah. Have you taken any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's happening in court today? Mm -mm. Is that a no? No. All right, ma'am. I'm going to accept your plea, adjudicate you guilty, sentence you to seven days in the Orange County Jail. You have credit for two days' time served. You will have to um, pay court costs, which will be due by January 24th of 2021. You also will have to undergo an HIV uh, STD test, also take the HIV AIDS awareness class. You'll have to provide proof of completion to the clerk of the court regarding in both that of that year? Pardon me? Within that year? No, within 30 days of your release from the jail. Okay. Okay? Just provide proof of completion to the clerk. You don't have to provide any results or anything like that, just that they're completed. So a letter um, from a doctor? Yes, and you can ask when you go back to the dorm if what you may be able to have the test here. I don't know. Okay. Um, and then you cannot return to the mapping zone. Um, does she have a copy of the, well, she'll get a copy of the order that I signed, correct? I, they will upon release. Okay. So ma'am, you're going to get an, um, an order that I've just signed that indicates what the mapping zone is. So you know where you're not allowed to go. Oh, okay. All right. You ain't got me no nut house. What? Never mind. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. Are you Mr. Wallace? Sir? How are you doing? Good, thank you. Are you Mr. Wallace? Yes, ma'am. All right. This is 20MM565. You were arrested for a trespass on property after warning. There's probable cause, sir. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Was there an offer for Mr. Wallace? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, three days with credit time served, court costs, no return to the scene of the trespass. You want to accept the offer, sir? What offer? Three days. Three days of what? Jail. For what? For trespassing at Cowboys. Uh, uh, is that a no? I've been arrested once. This is my second time. The first time, my mom was, I mean, it was very different. I got charged for a felony. M and Mr. Wells, I'm not sure what you're trying to tell me, but what I'm wanting to ask, wanting you to tell me is whether you want to accept the offer or you want to post your bond. I don't want to be in, I don't want to be in jail another second. All right, sir. Your bond is $500. I got it. You got that? Yes, ma'am. Great. Thank you. Am I on? You're done. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, good morning. Your name? Alexa Williams. Ms. Williams, this is 20MM562. You were arrested for entering or remaining in a place for prostitution and prostitution. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender. Um, was there the same offer yes, for Ms. Williams? Ms. Williams, the offer to resolve your case today would be uh, seven days in the Orange County Jail. You have credit for two days. You have to take the HIV AIDS awareness class, also get an STD. Uh, test and you cannot return to the mapping zone. Did you want to resolve your case today? Yeah, may I have a moment? Sure. Thank you. 
Yeah, and Miss Williams doesn't want to accept the offer. All right, Miss Williams, I'm going to release you on your own recognizance. You need to make sure that you um, contact your attorney within 24 hours of your release from the jail to give them your uh, contact information and that you attend your next court date. You're going to be given that court date when you're released from the jail. If you fail to appear at that, ma'am, there will be a warrant issued for your arrest and it will likely not have a bond. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just one moment. I didn't order that. I just ordered that she can't return to the scene, which was on Kirkland. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, Mr. Arce. Good morning, Judge. Mr. Arce, you are here in uh, 20 CO 71. You were arrested for possession of alcohol on the street and littering. There is probable cause. I'm going to appoint the public defender to represent you. Um, I'm not going to accept a plea today, Mr. Arce. In fact, I'm going to stay the bonds on both counts, and I'm revoking your out on bond case. Thank you. I knew I was going to upset you, Judge. At least I, I wasn't. I'm not, Mr. Arce, I'm not mad at you. I'm, I'm sad for you. This is the second time I've seen you this week, and I've cut you every single break. I've tried to help you. I've given you phone numbers. I don't know what else to do, but you keep coming back. So maybe if you stay here for a while, you'll figure it out. I don't know. You can't keep breaking the law either. So I, I know, Judge, um, but yeah, I was in downtown, but it does <laughs> an arrest is and, an arrest. And being in the street, the, the temptation is hard, you know. Well, you'll be here for a while. Thank you. All right, court will be in recess.